Good evening. This message I got, I was at church the other day. I mean, the Lord gave it to me. I was dealing with some Jehovah Witnesses the other day at the library. Now, Jehovah Witnesses disprove that Jesus Christ is God. And there are people out there, they, they, everything about Jesus is wrong. Well, today we're going to look at the humanity of Jesus Christ, the man. He had the characteristics that we have and that we should have. And in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21, For even hereto, or hereunto, were ye called. Christians, because Christ also suffered for us. Now, the Christian life is called to suffering. That's what Peter writes about. All they that live godly shall suffer persecution. Hey, have I become your enemy because I've spoken the truth? I'm going to stop there. I mean, I can go to a whole message about that, but Christians are to suffer. Because Christ also suffered. For us. If Christ suffered, so are you to suffer. Leaving us an example that you should follow his step. So here's our thing, the example of Jesus Christ. Exactly what is the Christian supposed to do? All right? John chapter 13. John chapter 13. Verse 15. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. So Christians are to live Christ-like. And some of the things that we are going to look at tonight, and some of the things that we would see Jesus as a man, being our example. Because it's not easy being a man. In your Christian life, and you see it in the Bible, and living for God, you're going to want to give up. You're going to get pain. You're going to get anguish. You're going to have troubles. You're going to have problems. You're going to be sleepy. You're going to be wide awake. You're going to have no idea what to do. So Christ, Jesus, Jesus Christ is our example. In John 11.35, we know the verse, Jesus wept. Jesus wept at his friend's funeral, Lazarus. He realized since Genesis 1 to John 11.35, the scripture recording, minus the fact of Jesus being a baby, the scripture foretells, tells us from Genesis 1, eternity before. To so John 11.45, for the very first time, God, Jesus, cried, and he cried at a funeral. Do you get that? Are you a widower in tears? Are you somebody that has lost a loved one in tears? And you're saved. So did Jesus. And Jesus knew he was going to call Lazarus out of the grave. He's still in tears. One other time he weeps over Jerusalem. Because he knows the anguish and the defeat that Jerusalem will face in 70 AD. Look in also... At John eleven thirty three, same chapter, 
When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, Jesus also weeping, the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit. Look at 39, I think. 34. No, I can't tell my writing. 33, 38, maybe. No. Well, there's another place where he said he groaned. And my handwriting is terrible. I apologize. Do you realize Jesus wept and Jesus groaned in his spirit? You got troubles in anything, Christian? Take it to Jesus. You're not alone. He knows your sorrow. He knows your groaning. He's the example. The Bible calls the Holy Spirit the Comforter. Look at John 14. John chapter 14, verse 16. And I will pray the Father. And he'll give you another comforter. Okay. Matthew 26. Matthew 26. We'll be in the Gospels. Matthew 26. I'm getting there. 25. 27. Matthew 26. Verse 42. Turn this one page. Okay. 42. Matthew 26, 42. He went again the second time and prayed. Oh, my Father. Jesus Christ, you believe he's God, right? You believe he's God? I do. Jesus Christ, who is God. And God is Jesus Christ. And Jesus is a human. Jesus Christ cried. Jesus Christ groaned in the spirit. Jesus Christ prayed to the Father. You know what many Christians don't do? They don't pray. They don't spend time in prayer with the Father. Well, if Jesus prayed to the Father, what is your excuse when Jesus is the example when we read in 1 Peter 2.21, that we read in John 13.15, he's the example. And if he cried, it's okay to cry. A man, you know, men don't cry. Jesus cried. You get that? I saw the other day, men don't cry. Jesus did. I do. My wife passed away in 2010. I still miss her. So Jesus prayed to the Father, Christian, there is no excuse for you not to pray to the Father. Matthew 4, 2. Now, Matthew 4, 2, before we get there, there are certain restrictions. And if you have a medical ailment, Whatever it could be, if it's diabetes or your 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 heart, your lungs, your liver, your, your kidney, whatever it is, seek your doctor's advice before we read the next one. Don't over afflict your body, what your body can't handle. It says 
when he had fasted, verse 2, chapter 4, 40 days and 40 nights. All right, Jesus is able. He's God. Okay? I'm not asking you to fast 40 days and night. I'm not ever going to ask you to force fast 40 days and night. Can you try in the beginning after seeking medical advice? Can you say, okay, I'm not going to have no breakfast tomorrow. And my fast will end at lunch. And when your body gets sound to that and there is no health threats, can you say, well, I'm not going to have no breakfast this day and no lunch. I'm going to eat at supper. And then, okay, I'm not going to have no breakfast. I'm not going to have no lunch, no dinner. I'm going to snack just before bedtime. And work your way up to one day, two days, three days. I wouldn't go far as a week. But remember, if you are unhealthy, if there are ailments, you got to watch your sugar. If you got to monitor your body, seek your doctor first and your pastor if you're going to fast. Don't end up in the hospital. Don't end up dead. Because if you cannot fast, the only fast you can do is by skipping one meal. And you do it to all the glory of God, then that's enough. You know what I mean? Don't ruin it. Don't ruin it. Pray about it. Pray to the Father about fasting. How's that? So, uh, Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Jesus fasted. He says, Stanley, have you ever fasted? Yes, I have. Have you fasted recently? Not with my health, not with my, my health elements. Luke chapter 4, verse 17. I gotta turn the page. 417. And there was delivered unto him a book of the prophet Isaiah. When he had opened the book, he found the place there was written, and the Spirit of the Lord is upon him. Jesus Christ, God, manifested in the flesh, read the Bible. And that's what Bible, they, they didn't have, you know, the Gospels. They didn't have the Pauline Epistle. He read what he had available to him. Now, we have all 66 books in the King James 1611 Bible. There is no excuse, Christian, for you not to read the Bible when Jesus read the Bible and what he had. Okay, he didn't have 66 books, but he read what he had. So, Christian, if you don't pray, the one that prayed it's going to judge you at the judgment seat of Christ. If you don't read the scriptures, the Bible fully, the one that read the scripture is going to judge you. And you can't say, well, Jesus, you don't know. The scripture says, yes, you do know. Well, I didn't cry at this person's death. Well, Jesus did. You know, be held accountable. I was taught that men don't cry. Well, Jesus did again. He's the example we read in 1 Peter 2.21 and John 13.15. He's the example. Look at Mark 4. Look at Mark 4. We're getting a lesson and Bible journey. Mark chapter 4. Some churches don't even have my Bible journey. 4.28. And something's wrong with me. Wait a minute. 438, okay. 
You know, some churches will say, well, you don't need to turn there, but, you know, write it down. Yes, you need to turn it there. Because maybe they're reading something else. Some churches don't even have the scriptures. I was in a church that the, the preacher didn't even bring his Bible. 438. And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. That's Jesus. You know, we, John eleven thirty five. 35, Jesus slept. No, he wept. Mark chapter 4, he slept. Get some sleep. I work first, second, and third shift. I do this and that. I'm just so busy. Christian, your Lord God and Savior slept. He slept on the back of a boat. You sleep. The book of Ezekiel says there's a time for everything. And for Jesus, there was a time to cry. There was a time to pray. There was a time to fast. There was a time to read the scriptures. And there was a time to fall asleep and get rest. What's your excuse? You got trouble sleeping? Just like the fasting, pray to the Father before you go running off to drugs. Ask the Father's help. You know, many years I was put on a medical device and I couldn't sleep. I prayed to the Father, I prayed to the Father. That medical device has been removed. And I sleep well now. Sometimes the Lord doesn't answer right away. Get that point. So he slept. Mark 11, I hope. I said my writing is terrible. Mark 11. Mark 11. Verse 19. Now, check that one again. Oh, Matthew. Matthew 11, 19. I'm, I apologize. Matthew 11. I write these down with my hands and I just can't see it. With my hands, uh, trying to get the pages. All right, so eleven nineteen. The Son of Man comes eating and drinking. Okay. Matthew twenty six. Matthew twenty six. Matthew twenty six twenty six. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it. Okay, we talked about Jesus fasting. How about Jesus eating and drinking? I'm not talking about alcohol. You're to eat. You're to have something to drink. You're to fast. If you can, if you're able. Again, eating and drinking. If your stomach can't handle, take for instance, some people cannot handle pork. Don't eat pork. Some people are allergic to foods. Don't eat it. I mean, if you're allergic to nuts and all that, don't eat peanut butter. Get something else. Grab yourself crackers. Grab yourself that, they, that you can get in the store today. They got these little lunchable meals and stuff like that. They got these packet things. They got a little bag of chips. They got all kinds of things you can go and grab and eat something. Well, I'm too busy to have, have lunch. I, I'm just, go to the, the vending machine at your job or, or run to the corner market real quick. Get something that's quick and easy. Bring it back. Dine on that. Get an apple. Get a 
prepare whatever you can get. Jesus fasted and Jesus ate and he drank. You are able, if you are able, fast. When you are able, get a meal and have a drink with it. And I am not telling you to get alcohol when I say get a drink. Water, soda, Kool-Aid, tea, coffee, no alcohol. Again, that's the examples of Jesus Christ, who is God. Do you believe he's God? Well, look what we read so far. God cried. God grieved. God got hungry. God wanted to drink. John chapter 4. And he didn't get it. On the cross, he says, I thirst. And they gave him vinegar. So, Mark 3. Mark 3. You ready for this one? Mark chapter 3. Verse. Oh, boy. I can't read my Brian. Three, five, or six. All right, three, five. Mark three, five. And when they had looked, when he had, Jesus looked around about on them with anger, being grieved in the hardness of their heart. He is angry and he's grieved. The Bible says, grieve not the Holy Spirit. They grieved Jesus. Jesus got angry. Paul says, be angry, but sin not. But Jesus got angry, but he didn't sin. You can get angry and not sin. You can be angry at the religion of the Catholic Church, but don't go bashing the, and burning and bombing the Catholic Church. Be angry and go out and witness the Catholics. You, as a Christian, like Jesus, the example, you can get angry and grieve. But, Paul says, be angry and sin. Don't you sin with your anger. Control your anger. Calm your anger. Don't fly off the hand. You know, one thing I learned raising two children, and I learned it late, is if you're going to punish your children, and, and whatever the punish, spank you, whatever you do, give yourself as a parent a timeout. Give it like an hour, half hour, hour, then call the children. When you calm down, then you call the children and say, listen, you've done this thing wrong. You're going to get spanking. You, you're not going to get this. You're going to be in your, whatever your punishment is. Don't go beating the child right away, because you're going to beat them, not hit them. And you may regret your decision. Angry at your child? Calm down before you do anything. Okay? So Jesus got angry. What would Jesus do? He got angry. Look at Matthew 3, 16. Matthew 3, 16. We got a brand new Bible here. It's hard to turn the pages. I'm working my way through even through the year. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. So, Jesus is God. And there are people out there that teach us baptism for salvation. You tell me Jesus is lost? Jesus didn't need baptism for salvation. Baptism can't save you. But Jesus was baptized. There are people in the Baptist church, they get saved, but they don't get baptized. Jesus did. It's a testimony. To the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's a public testimony that you have received Christ as your Savior. Jesus did it. 
You're without excuse. Now, th th there is an excuse. Immersion. He came out of the water. You're not sprinkled. You're not dipped. You're not water gun. You're not fire hydrant. If there is, for whatever reason, you cannot go under the water, immerse in the water. Let's say you're in a nursing home and, and you are bound to a bed. Oh, we're going to sprinkle of water. No. If you cannot immerse that person, like Jesus, the example, don't baptize him. Because baptism, no matter what, is immersion. And you got an extra. But Jesus was baptized. How's that? And they're, they're, they don't get baptized. They said a prayer, they get saved, whatever, and they leave, and they never come back. No, well, if you're saved, you're going to stand before Jesus, and you're going to have to give an account. How's that? Okay. Uh, John nineteen three. John nineteen three. This goes with Peter. What Peter said in two twenty one nineteen three, and they said, "Hail, King of the Jews!" And they smote him with their hands. Verse two. The soldiers plated a crown. And put it on his head, and they put him on a purple robe. You know what? Jesus was mocked. He was made fun of. He suffered. He got pain from man. He's our example. You lost the job because you're a Christian. Somebody yelled at you because you're a Christian. Someone pointed their finger hard into you because you're a Christian. Somebody chopped off your head in the name of religion because you're a Christian. Somebody's put you in jail because you're a Christian. You maybe had to wear handcuffs because you're a Christian. You may not have been invited to the family picnic because you're a Christian. People may have made fun of you because you're a Christian. But Jesus is the example. Have you suffered for him? That's twice we did that. Second Peter, I mean, excuse me, First Peter 2.21. You're not suffering. You're not living a Christian life right. If, the, if your city or town Loves you in your church. You're doing wrong. Who loved Jesus? Oh, his disciples? How many disciples were at the cross? I mean, we sing the song, at the cross, at the cross, where I first... Only one disciple was at the cross. Out of twelve. 40 and more. John 19, 30. When Jesus therefore received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. He bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Jesus died. Now, outside the rapture, Christian, you're going to die. And be absent with the body and present with the Lord. You may be put on faggots and be burnt to death. You may have your body hung upside down. 
you may be in numerous ways tortured by the government. You may be dragged through the city square. You may be tied in a sack with, with, with wild animals and thrown into the river. You may be beheaded. Christian. Jesus was crucified. A painful torture means by the Roman government at the authority of the Jewish people. His people. He came unto his own, his own received the none. Jesus. You can't kill God and God is Jesus. And yet Jesus is also a man. Luke 24. Luke 24. Luke 24. Luke 24, verse 6. He is not here. He is risen. Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures. And he was buried. And we missed that one. We'll look at that in a minute. He was buried, which we just missed. And Luke 24, 6. He was resurrected. He's alive. He's not dead. He's not like Muhammad. He's not like the popes. He's not like Joseph Smith. He's not like the leaders of the, of the Jehovah Witness. They're dead. In the grave. Mary Baker Eddy's dead. In the grave with her telephone. Jesus. Died. Was buried. And arose again. The third day. According to the scriptures. Now the one we missed. I apologize. John 19. John 19. John 19. John 19. John nineteen forty two. Forty to forty two. And they took then took they the body of Jesus, wound it in linen clothes with the spices, as the man of the Jews is prepared. Now in the place where they were crucified there was a garden, in the garden a new sepulchre wherein was never a man laid. There laid they Jesus, therefore, because the Jewish Preparation day for the sepulchre was nigh at hand. So Jesus was buried like you would do with a dead man, but he was buried in haste. Hurry up, the holiday is coming. Hurry up, the feast day is coming. Come on, get him in there. What a way to treat a dead body. What a way to treat God. <laughs> That's how they did it. Hurry up. You know? That's Jesus, man. And there is so much more that we could do, but time is just... Maybe I'll do a part two sometime. I, I'm not sure. But I hope you learned some things of what Jesus did and what you can do as a Christian.